Hey everyone, I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips from ClayShare and I'm going to show you how to install a kiln vent on your kiln. That's right, we're going to be putting a vent on. Now this kiln, my little doll test kiln, does not have a hole drilled in it for a kiln vent. Sometimes they come with that hole pre-drilled. My larger kiln, the E23T that I have sitting right here, that came with the vent hole drilled. So I'm going to show you how to remove the base here. I'm going to show you how to drill your hole. We're going to mark it, drill the hole, and then attach the box. And then we're going to attach the vent. We're going to put everything back together, run it up to the blower, and that's it. It's really, really simple. So we're going to go over the tools and materials you'll need for this. And then I'm going to walk you through all the steps uh, you need to install this vent. I'm going to do it. If I can do it, you can do it. It's really simple. So come along with me and learn how to install your very own kiln vent. All right, so here I have the tools and materials I'm going to be using to install my kiln vent. Now you're going to get your kiln and you're going to get your EnviroVent kiln kit and that's going to come with a few things. You're going to get this junction box that will go on the bottom of your kiln. It has your hardware that you need for it. Now you'll also get this hose right here with the clamps on it and you'll get a blower and so I've already installed the blower in my window because I use it for my other kiln and there is a way you can split them off and have two vents going into one blower I'm not going to be doing that right now on this video but if you guys want it I'll show you how to do it and what we did is I took out a pane of glass in my window the studio that I use currently is in a barn I have very old windows and I was able to just remove a pane of glass cut a board to fit the size, that same size that pane of glass was, and then cut a hole in it for the blower. So that's my exhaust right there. So that's what you'll have for the kit. And then you'll need a few things for um, making this all happen. So you need a couple screwdrivers. I've got a Phillips and a flathead, and these are just regular hand screwdrivers. And you need a drill. So here I have a drill with a quarter inch bit that's all you need. You don't want to drill a hole bigger than that in the bottom of your kiln. You don't need more air being pulled out of your kiln than that. So I have this and a power drill for that. So you'll need your hand screwdrivers and a power drill, a pencil, and a yardstick. And that's it. That's all we need. Well, and a kiln, right? But you got the kiln. So we're going to go ahead and remove the bottom and then I'm going to show you how we're going to mark it so we can put the hole in and then attach the box. All right, so we need to start by removing the kiln from the base. And so you'll have to remove the control box. And um, on my kiln, this particular model, the little doll kiln, I have some screws that are holding a handle that are attached to the bottom that I have to take off. So I have four screws to remove. I'm just going to use a Phillips screwdriver. Just go in and remove this bottom screw. I'm just going to undo this on this side. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and then the same thing for the two screws that are attached to that handle. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and after I get those all unscrewed, I'm going to remove everything from the base. And so I like to use my fingers to go in here after I've started it and remove the screw and put these in a dish somewhere so you don't lose them. You need to keep these. So I'm going to put them in a dish over here and let me go remove the rest and I'll be right back and we'll remove the kiln from the base. All right, I've removed all the screws. So it was only four. You have the two here for the control box and then the two on the handle. And that's for this kiln. Your kiln might have more screws. So it just depends on what kiln you have. So now we're ready to remove the kiln from the base. So I do have a helper. Kevin's here in the studio helping me out. Thank you. So he's going to lift this up and it should. Perfect. Look at that. Perfect. So here's our bottom and we lift it up we can see into our kiln stand we need to put our hole in this so we're going to do that now all right now that we've removed the kiln from the base we're ready to mark it for our hole um, where we're going to be putting our junction box on so let me just grab my junction box and i'll show you so this is the box that's going to attach this is the inside of the kiln so this is where the kiln shelves are going to sit in here the bottom down here so we're still on the kiln stand this is going to actually attach to the bottom and it's going to face this direction but we have a big space so you don't have to quite worry too much about getting it exactly in the center but you want to mark it as close to center as possible so I'm going to show you how to do that now 
You're going to take a yardstick, I found this is the easiest thing to work with, and you're going to go corner to corner, and you're just going to draw a line. And yes, you're drawing on the inside of your brand new kiln, but it'll be okay, I promise. Most likely it'll just burn out in the first few firings, so it won't even matter. So far we have right here, and now let's go ahead and draw one more. And this is an approximation, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Close as you can get will work, and I think we're about, about there. So right here, right here, that's where we're going to drill our hole, and we're actually going to drill it right here on the stand. I'm going to lift this up and show you. If you look down in, you see there's the hole where the box is going to mount to, and we're just going to go ahead and line this back up, get it centered as best as you can on the stand before you drill it, because you want to make sure when you drill, you actually drill down into an empty space, not into your stand. And now you're going to take your drill. You ready? Here we go. Put the drill in. You're going to go straight down. That's it. Done. And the reason we drill from the inside out is because if there's any blowouts or anything, that will happen on the bottom. You won't see it on the kiln. So this is done. And let me show you. We'll turn it over. Just in there. We have a hole right there. Perfect. Perfect little hole in the bottom. Look at that. See? You can do it. All right. So we have our hole drilled. We're going to remove the base now. We're done with that. And we're going to go ahead and flip over our kiln stand. And we're going to install our box. So here we have the box. And before we actually attach the box to the stand, we want to attach the hose. You know, the reason we're going to do this now is because if you look on the stand, there's this little lip and it makes it really hard. Here, I'm just going to put, I'm going to put the hose, I'll put it this way so you can see. Um, you see right here, there's not much space. It'd be really hard to put a hose on. So we're going to attach the hose to the box first and that will make things a little simpler. So we have our hose right here. And if you want to put your gloves on for this, you can do this. You know, sometimes working with metals, um, it can be a little unnerving and you can be worried that you could cut yourself. So if you're uncomfortable with this, grab yourself a pair of gloves, but we're just going to stick this on. Just wiggle it until it goes on. And usually this works best when you're not filming, <laughs> but you know, so I'm just going to keep wiggling it till I get it on. It'll go. I promise I've done this before. It just takes a little bit. There we go. Now it's going. So you wiggle this on and then we have this hose clamp right here. So you're going to scooch this up. Make sure your hose is on enough. And then using a screwdriver, we're going to tighten that hose clamp so that it doesn't slide off. So that tightens our hose onto our box here. There. Okay. There. So now we have our hose on and we're going to go ahead, put this on. Let me see how we're lined up here. I think we're going this way. No, nope, we're going to the back. Okay, good. This is how I want my hose to be anyhow. Now this hose is flexible and it does expand. So if you need to get more hose, you can just pull this hose and it will expand on you. There. Line this up. Line this up. Now we're gonna start with our washers. And we have four of those, so one, two, three, get my fourth one here, four, and then after your four washers, you have four nuts, let me grab these guys, three, here's the fourth one, and you're just going to line these up and then tighten them down, so finger tight. And then I didn't mention it in the tools and materials, but if you have a socket or a wrench you want to use to finish tightening them, you can do that. You can just leave it at finger tight. That's fine. 
but if you want to go a little tighter, just don't strip them. Don't go too tight. So there's the third and here's the fourth. And after we get this done, this is basically it for this part here. There, so it's on, it's attached, and we're just gonna flip it over. All right, and then before I put my kiln back on, I do wanna attach my, my hose to the blower, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And that would be attached exactly the same way as I attached it to the box here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so I flipped over my kiln stand and I've got the hose ready, and here's the blower. I'm gonna attach it to the blower. Now it's not plugged in. Make sure your blower's not plugged in whenever you're working on it, just safety precautions. Now, this hose expands and it's made of metal. It is sharp, which I have found out because I was not wearing my gloves before and I said, what did I say? I said, you don't need to wear gloves, but you can if you want to. I'm gonna tell you, wear gloves because I did cut this finger right here. So I learned a lesson. Um, I'd been doing this and I wasn't wearing gloves before and I guess I just got lucky, but the edges of this metal are really quite sharp and I don't want you getting cut, so wear some gloves. Everybody always asks about what kind of gloves do I wear in the studio. Um, these are just cheap garden gloves that I got from a grocery store called Aldi. So that's, that's what I wear for gloves. And I usually buy multiple pairs when I see them, so I always have one on hand. All right, so I've stretched this out enough because you wanna be able to reach your blower from your kiln stand. And like I said, there's a lot of material, so if you need to stretch out a lot more, just, just stretch it out and get it to the length you need. And I'm going to pull this out. Now you'll want that hose clamp, which is down here. Here it is. I'm going to work its way up. And then I'm just going to shape this. You just adjust the metal so that it will fit onto the blower. I need a, I need a little more hose. So let me get a little more hose. This is the kind of thing you don't know how much hose you're going to need until you go to attach it. But it, it comes with enough. It's just, you've got, there we go. There, now look. So I have it going on. Here's my hose clamp coming up. I don't have the kiln installed again. We just have the stand. I'm just letting you all know. The, the kiln is not back on the stand yet. And we're just gonna wiggle this in until it goes on. Yes, wear gloves. I can tell you already just wiggling this and feeling how this feels. If I wasn't wearing my gloves, I would have cut myself again because there's some sharp bits. Okay, so once that's on, take your hose clamp and just wiggle, 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 all the way up. And using a flathead screwdriver, you're just going to tighten this down. And it'll take a few turns to get it tight enough so that it crimps it onto the blower. And there we go. Okay, all right, so let's test it. Let's see, I have the blower right here. I have an outlet near my blower. You know, you need to have power for your blower to work. So my outlet, it's right here, it's right over here. So I'm gonna, it's, plug it in. Let's turn it on, see what happens. So we have kiln vent. Now I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble the kiln. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the kiln back together. So we're gonna just line up the base. Make sure you line that up in the center of your kiln stand. There we go. Dust it off. It's got a, it's got a little bit of kiln brick from drilling that hole. Okay, so now we're gonna put the next section on. So this is the main part of the kiln. We're going to go ahead and put that on. And you just get this lined up. Let's see that. It's pretty close to it's pretty close to good. And now we've got to go ahead and screw in all those screws that we took off. So we're gonna do that next.
All right, so here we have it. We installed a kiln vent on our kiln. If I can do it, you can do it. Now remember, it was really simple. Just follow those steps. All we did was remove the base. So we undid the screws, right? That was pretty simple. And then we marked it, drilled our hole, attached our hose to our box, attached the box to the base, to the, to the kiln stand, and then turned everything over, attached the hose to the blower, right? And then put everything back together and screwed it in. And then I just plugged my kiln in. Do you want me to turn it on? This is going to be the first time turning on my new baby kiln. Ready? Oh, there it is. It's lighting up. What's it saying? A true Bartlett pair. Because I have this Genesis controller on here, and it pairs with the Bartlett pair app so that I can check my kiln on the app while I'm firing it. But this is so easy to do. If you don't have a kiln vent on your kiln yet, you know how to do it now. And, and the thing is, I showed you how to do this on a small test kiln, but everything I did here would have been exactly the same for a large kiln. The only difference with larger kilns is you might have to remove more screws. That's all. And they're a little bigger and heavier, so you might need a little more help moving that kiln around. But other than that, it's exactly the same kind of installation. And it's really simple. And I'm going to tell you, using a kiln vent has changed everything with my firings. I get, I think the colors are better in the glazes personally. You know, I think the kilns are more even. And I certainly know that my environment in my studio is much healthier. So for me, I'm always going to use a kiln vent. Now, because I have two kilns, I am going to have both of them vented through the same blower. And you can do that just with, um, this, it's just a, a little junction box that you attach it to. So it's, it's pretty simple. All right, everyone, there you have it. Installing a kiln vent. I hope you find this helpful. Please put a kiln vent on your kiln if you don't have one yet. No excuses. You know how. And if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks everyone for joining me. And I cannot wait until we meet again in the studio.